tracking rain from our potential tropical cyclone pushing up into the triangle, a little heavier down south. I'll show you when the heaviest rain will arrive where you are. And wind show wipers at the ready. It may be a messy morning commute today. The WREL Storm Tracker is giving you a live look at the roads before you head out the door. And we are learning more this morning about the second assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. The ties the suspected would-be assassin has to North Carolina. Plus, more jobs are coming to Johnston County, which is rapidly growing. But we know about the latest manufacturer setting up shop there. A lot of stories that we are covering this morning, including today being a WRL weather alert day. Please pay attention during yeah. this broadcast. Thanks for joining us here mm -hmm. on WRL News at Fox 50. Chris Lovingood. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Of course, we're going to start with weather. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner uh, tracking where that rain is falling now. And you mentioned uh, when the heaviest it's going to be is. And it's going to pick up in intensity for us closer to lunchtime in the triangle. It's steady down to the south right now. And of course, it will become heavier there as well once we get into the afternoon and evening. Just a little light patchy rain around the triangle. And then it's been steadier down to the south. You can see a little wave getting ready to move over toward Chapel Hill and just south of Durham. Clayton Wilson's Mill, Smithfield, seeing some showers and uh, just a few minutes ago, we had the camera from Southern Pines where it's raining. Uh, uh, Southern Pines there, Fayetteville, a little rain getting ready to move back in and it's raining in Clinton right now. Here's a look at downtown Raleigh. We do have some showers falling, but obviously not heavy enough to that person just carrying their umbrella. So just a little light drizzle out there currently. Our weather alert day does include a flood threat, but that's more likely this afternoon and overnight tonight. We also have a level one risk for severe storms in our eastern counties and the winds will pick up later today to 20 to 25, but gusting to 40 in some places. Flood watch includes the entire viewing area around two inches from the triangle area northward closer to maybe three to four, maybe some pockets of five in our southern counties. We have the potential for isolated tornadoes in our eastern counties, and it is still as of 8 a.m. a potential tropical cyclone. If it gets a name, it would be Helene. It does have winds at 50 miles per hour moving very slowly, and the heaviest rain is likely to be closest to the South Carolina line, uh, but we will have the potential for some heavy rain here, especially as we get into the afternoon and evening. Watch those yellow shaded uh, colors continuing to lift northward as we get into the afternoon and definitely into the evening hours. Checking out our rain chances today, definitely going up to around 90% later this afternoon and this evening. We're going to walk through the winds hour by hour coming up in just a little bit, Ken. Uh, Elizabeth, at 8.02 happening now in the WRO Traffic Center, we're just getting reports of a crash involving a bus on South Person Street near East Davie Street this morning. Uh, we also have the WRO Storm Tracker out on the roadways this morning. Laura Levine is in downtown Raleigh trying to figure out exactly what's going on. You're on your way to that uh, crash scene. Laura, w right now, set the scene for us as you're on your way to that bus crash. Yes, Ken, here in the storm tracker, you can see we're on South Person Street right now, and it says we're approaching where that report of the crash came in. So we're looking to see exactly where this occurred, and we're working to find out if there were any injuries on board uh, with those students. Oh, wait, here's the school bus to my right. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we just passed where that accident occurred. I can see a school bus and uh, RPD on the scene. So we're going to loop back around here and hopefully have an update for you and give you a sense of what this scene looks like. Again, working to find out if there were any injuries reported, students on board, if so, how many, what school they were going to. And once we get all of that information, we'll bring it back to you. Excellent, Laura. We appreciate that. We're going to continue to monitor those road conditions as well. This is a live look at I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. You can see the westbound lanes moving away from us this morning. That's the northern loop of the Beltline, and you can see uh, the slowdown that's causing you looking at maybe like a five-minute delay. Also in the southern loop as well, uh, similarly around Lake Wheeler Road, you get past Gorman Street, you're in free and clear this morning. Some of the trouble spots coming into the capital city this morning, you're coming in from Moore County, from Lee County, from Apex, you're looking at a nine-minute delay if you're using US-1. Also an eight-minute delay if you get past the usual slowdown that we see around Lizard Lake Road, you get to Nidale, you're looking at an eight minute delay and uh, our friends at Wake Forest are looking at a 10 minute delay coming in this morning. Uh, just keep that in mind. Of course, if you're getting ready to head out, pop us on on the radio. You can listen to us throughout the triangle at 101.5 HD3. Yeah, thank you. Emergency management teams are on the ready this morning as they prepare for possible impacts from the storm system that we've been talking about this morning. This is happening just over a month after Tropical Storm Debbie brought some winds and some serious rainfall. That storm caused flooding and power outages. Duke Energy expects some areas to lose power again during this storm, but it doesn't plan to bring extra crews in to respond. However, it will move the crews already in place to hotspot areas that are needed. 
And WREL will closely monitor this system. We are going to bring you live reports from the Triangle to the coast today. We'll keep you updated on the threat of flooding and other potential effects. This morning, the FBI is launching a global investigation to learn how an apparent would-be assassin got within just a few hundred yards of former President Donald Trump. Law enforcement says the would-be shooter was just outside of the fence line of Trump's golf club in Florida while the former president was playing nearby. Secret Service agents spotted the suspect and shot toward him as they say he was lying in wait. Trump is thanking the Secret Service and other law enforcement for their efforts to keep him safe. In a post to his Truth Social account just before midnight, Trump said, quote, I would like to thank everyone for your concern and well wishes. It was certainly an interesting day. He went on to thank everyone who kept him safe and said he is very proud to be an American. In her statement released, Vice President Kamala Harris said in part, as we gathered the facts, I will be clear, I condemn political violence. We all must do our part to ensure that this incident does not lead to more violence. She also said that she is thankful that Trump is safe. And House Speaker Mike Johnson posted this photo along with former President Trump last night after the assassination scare. Johnson said that he and his wife spent several hours with Trump at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Johnson posted the photo to X calling Trump unstoppable and thanking God for protecting him once again. And the federal government is taking over the case against the suspect. This is him here, Ryan Wesley Ralph. Local authorities were able to take him into custody shortly after the apparent assassination attempt. Law enforcement say they found an AK-47 style rifle, a GoPro and other items left behind by the suspect in the bushes near Trump International Golf Club. This morning, we're working to learn more about Ralph's North Carolina ties. His LinkedIn account shows that he attended North Carolina A&T. The North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections has dozens of records for him dating back to 2002. For example, charges that year include possessing a weapon of mass destruction, which is a felony. Records also show in 2003 he was sentenced for driving without a license, carrying a concealed weapon and hit and run. Then in 2010, he was convicted of possessing stolen goods. The local Fox station in Greensboro reports Ralph lived in that area before moving to Hawaii sometime this year. Johnston County is growing quickly. Today we'll learn more about the latest expansion that could bring hundreds of new jobs. And WRL's Kelsey Coffey explains what we know ahead of today's announcement. Today, officials will talk about bringing a new food manufacturer to the area. This would make the second company to expand here with the Eastfield Development in Selma in less than six months. This could bring about 200 jobs to the area. A drug manufacturer announced an expansion to Johnston County back in June. People familiar with this new deal tell WREL this could be a $35 million development. The county did not reveal the name of the company, but we could hear an announcement in just a few hours. Local officials are scheduled to discuss economic incentives for the company today. That's a sign that Johnston County is the company's choice. The county's economic development director, Chris Johnson, says this potential deal speaks to the area's growth. We're traditionally in the top five of the fastest growing counties in the state. Uh, At one time, we were the ninth fastest growing county in the U.S. statistically. Uh, And we're not slowing down. State economic leaders will also meet this morning. It's likely that their meeting is related to this new development, but we're still working to confirm that. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Johnston County. Today, the man accused of killing Moore County woman Alicia Watts is expected to make a court appearance. James Dunmore is scheduled to be in a Montgomery County courtroom this afternoon. He's accused of killing Watts last year. She was his girlfriend. A judge previously denied a motion from Dunmore's attorney asking for his release from jail while he awaits trial. He's being held on a million dollar bond. And one man was killed during a shooting in Henderson. Another man was shot in the same shooting. Police say Romids Miles and Sylvester Burton were both shot on Maple Street around 1.40 Saturday morning. Miles died. Investigators learned there was previously a fight between Miles and another person named Darius Harris. They believe that led to Saturday's shooting. Harris was arrested and is being held in the Vance County Detention Center. Police say a fight led to two people being shot in Roanoke Rapids. Police arrested Calvin Robinson and charged him with two counts of assault, inflicting serious injury in the shooting. It happened on Washington Street around 1130 yesterday morning. Police say the two people who were shot were not armed. They both have non-life-threatening injuries. 
Covering Wake County today, you have another chance to learn more about plans to move students to different schools next fall. A virtual information session about the Wake County Public School System's student reassignment plan that's scheduled for 730 tonight. It'll focus on Pleasant Plains and Baucom Elementary Schools. There will also be a public hearing in late October or early November at a special meeting. Coming up as the presidential election gets closer, congressional leaders say there is more work to be done with women's productive rights. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill to make in vitro fertilization more accessible. We'll be talking about that. Plus giving you a recap of last night's Emmy Awards. And the tropical system headed our way is bringing some light patchy rain now. I'll show you when the rainfall rates will increase where you are coming up. Welcome back. Happy Monday. What a rainy Monday it is. This is a live look over Southern Pines. You're watching WRL News available on Hulu and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. And this is going to be the story much of today. It's a WRL weather alert day. Meteorologist Elizabeth Garner showing us where the rain is falling right now and how much of it we could see. So far, we've had just some light patchy rain around the triangle, but it's been a good bit steadier in our southern counties from Goldsboro down to Clinton and Fayetteville and down towards Southern Pines. We'll likely see this lifting north over the next 24 hours and continuing to bring some steady to heavy rain uh, from the southern part of the viewing area up north. You can see right here uh, in Raleigh, particularly on the southern half of uh, town, looking at some showers. Uh, raining in Garner and Clayton right now, as well as Fuquay and Holly Springs. Chapel Hill seeing a little shower rolling through as well. We head down to the south. Fayetteville seeing this next wave of rain coming through. Clinton, Goldsboro seeing some wet conditions right now as well. Nothing terribly heavy this morning, but as our low pressure system starts to move on shore, it will produce some heavier rain, especially in our southern counties. Flood watch in effect through tomorrow morning as much as two to five inches of rain. We're looking closer to two inches in the triangle and maybe three to four with some isolated totals a little higher than that in our southern counties. Isolated tornadoes are possible from the triangle area eastward coming up in about 30 minutes. Chris Michaels coming up to talk about why we do see uh, sometimes tropical systems producing uh, tornadoes. We take a look here at what's going on. Our low pressure system sitting here just off the coast of South Carolina producing some heavy rain along the coast, but we haven't seen that translating into our viewing area yet. However, it is likely we'll see by midday into the afternoon that heavy rain and gusty wind gusting up to as much as 40 miles an hour. And of course, we do have that tornado threat in our eastern counties. This is still a potential tropical cyclone because it does not have a closed circulation. The winds are strong enough for it to be a tropical cyclone, but it just doesn't have the right structure. So that doesn't really mean anything for us in terms of what we'll see from the system. We're going to be on the right side of the low and that's where we tend to see the strongest winds and often the heaviest rain as well. So you can see that increasing as we get into the afternoon lunchtime, seeing some of that heavier rain down to the south. By 3 o'clock, it's lifting up toward the Virginia line and it's going to come and go in waves during the late afternoon and evening. But you can see that heavy rain, especially closer to the South Carolina line. That's where we could see as much as 3 to 5 inches of rain, likely to see maybe 1 to 2 inches from the Triangle area northward. So our truly our flooding threat there will be a little lower. And from the Triangle area northward, winds will be gusting 20 to 25 that some of our southern counties could see up to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, which could cause some isolated power outages. Um, heavy rain flooding is going to be our biggest threat. We'll have that potential for some isolated wind damage and a small chance of tornadoes. We check out Clinton. Clinton has been seeing rain overnight to, uh, last night and for much of the morning. It's not been terribly heavy, but steady out there. Our temperatures are cool in the upper 60s. Once we get past tomorrow, we are still not out of the uh, we're not in the clear. We'll continue to have a chance of scattered thunderstorms really all the way through Friday. We do begin to dry out a little bit over the weekend. And Ken, the first day of fall is Sunday. Yay, looking forward to that. I know many of you are not looking forward to heading out on the roadways because of the situations we're seeing this morning. Uh, this is a crash on Highway 70 in the southbound lanes near Miami Boulevard. You can see the huge backups it's causing there in both directions. You're looking at maybe a five to ten minute delay in both directions depending on where you are. So keep that in mind. I would recommend uh, 80, uh, 88 I-885, oh, Durham Freeway is an alternate route. You can see those southbound lanes, a huge backup uh, starting at the Durham Freeway all the way to East Cornwallis Boulevard. Uh, depending on where you are, you're coming into the capital city this morning, you want, might want to look at Highway 55 as an alternate route. We do have the W.O. Storm Tracker out on the roadways this morning. Laurel Levine, photographer uh, Charles Bradley, keeping an eye on road conditions for us. She's in the downtown area this morning. You can see the damp road conditions in the downtown area. The 
windshield wipers are going this morning. Just be mindful of that and really build in some extra time and leave the house a little bit earlier than usual this morning just to be on the safe side. Let's give you a spin around the Beltline, shall we? This is I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. The westbound lanes are moving away from us. Slow but a steady clip, no doubt, but uh, keep that in mind as you head out. Uh, on the south side of the Beltline, we see traffic is flowing nicely from uh, uh, Lake um, from I-40 and Rock Quarry Road. And as we isolate the Beltline this morning, you can see what I'm talking about in terms of a three to five minute delay on the north side as well as the south side of the Beltline as well. Congressional leaders are calling for legislative action on in vitro fertilization. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says a second vote on an IVF bill is expected soon. The legislation guaranteed access to the treatment. But a vote of 48 to 47 stalled it, with two GOP senators siding with Democrats. House Republicans are also pushing for Speaker Mike Johnson to hold a vote backing IVF before the election. At least eight people are dead after heavy rains hit central and eastern Europe. You can see flooding and rising water levels across Poland, Austria, Romania and the Czech Republic. A slow moving no low pressure system dubbed Storm, Storm Boris dumped a month's worth of rain over these countries in the past few days. This is the heaviest rain some areas have seen in over 100 years. New this morning, Tito Jackson, a member of the Jackson 5, has died. A family friend says he believes Jackson passed away while driving from New Mexico to Oklahoma yesterday. But an official cause of death has not been released just yet. Jackson recently returned from Germany after spending the summer touring with his brothers, Jackie and Marlon. Tito rose to fame in the 70s for playing the guitar for the Jackson 5 with his brothers, Jackie, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael. He was 70 years old. And heads up for drivers who commute through Wayne County. The U.S. 70 bypass around Goldsboro is changing names. It'll now be known as Interstate 42. Nearly 200 signs will be changed. The first ones go up today. And the move is part of a plan to convert U.S. 70 into an interstate from I-40 in Wayne County down to the coast. The year's best shows and performances were honored at this year's Primetime Emmy Awards. Mark Barger shows us the big winners of that night. The Emmy goes to... Hacks. An upset at Sunday night's Emmy Awards as a comedy about a legendary stand-up comedian took top honors and brought series star Jean Smart her third straight win as Best Actress. It's very humbling, it really is, and I, I appreciate this because I, I just don't get enough attention. <laughs> Hacks beat last season's winner, The Bear, but that series still scored an acting win for Liza Colon Zayas. And so all the Latinas... Who are you looking at me? Keep believing and vote. Her co-star Eben Moss Backrack also won supporting honors, while Jeremy Allen White made it two straight wins as Best Actor. Thank you so much. My heart is just beating right out of its chest. In the drama categories, Shogun. It was an historic night for that samurai period tale. Best drama among its 18 awards, including Best Actor for Hiroyuki Sanada. Uh, I'm beyond honored. Sonata's co-star Anna Sawai scored Best Actress. They're the first Japanese actors to win those categories. This is to all the women who expect nothing and continue to be an example for everyone. Thank you so much. The Crown's Elizabeth Debicki and the morning show's Billy Crudup won drama's supporting acting honors. Baby Ranger! Netflix's breakout hit captured Best Limited Series. Jessica Gunning earning Best Supporting Actress, while acting and writing Emmys came to series creator and star Richard Gad. Follow your heart and the rest will fall into place. Thank you. A celebration of television on its biggest night. A lot of big winners. That was Mark Barger reporting. Other winners on the night included Jodie Foster, Best Actress in a Limited Series for True Detective, Night Country, and Peacock's The Traders won Best Reality Competition Series and John Oliver's Last Week Tonight beat out Saturday Night Live for Best Scripted Variety Series. Here at home, Fayetteville Technical Community College will hold a ribbon cutting this morning at its new nursing annex building on Hull Road. The 6,000 square foot building is connected to the Nursing Education and Simulation Center. It houses office space for faculty and the dean of nursing. In 2022, the college relocated the nursing program from a building where it shared space with 13 other health care programs into its current location. Today's ceremony is at 9 a.m. Kaylin Clark set yet another record. She now holds the WNBA rookie season scoring record. That's thanks to her career high 35 points during last night's game. 
the Indiana Fever beat the Dallas Wings 110 to 109. Clark has now scored 761 points so far this season, and that breaks the rookie record set by Simone Augustus of the Minnesota Lynx. Clark says it is a full circle moment for her because Augustus was the first WNBA player she met as a kid. How cool is that? Time is 8.23. We are learning more about the man suspected of attempting to shoot and kill former President Donald Trump. The ties Ryan Routh has to North Carolina in his criminal history here. And another mark of growth in Johnston County, what we know about a food manufacturer coming to the county. Stay safe with the latest WRAL weather alert day info. Get up to the minute weather and traffic conditions when you get in your car. In Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Happy Monday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. It is a WRL weather alert day. A messy morning commute right now. Meteorologist Elizabeth Garter tracking where that rain is falling, Elizabeth. Yeah, you can see it, especially from the Triangle area southward. It's been a little steadier in our southern counties and kind of coming and going around the Triangle area this morning. We zoom in and you can see a little light rain in Raleigh and Clayton and then uh, there in the northern part of Chatham County. We head down to the south and uh, a little uh, steadier here in Fayetteville, Clinton, Dunn and Goldsboro this morning. We take a live look at Clayton and you can see it is wet. It's been wet there for hours this morning. 68 degrees around the triangle as you're heading out the door and we'll see that chance for rain continuing to go up as we get into the afternoon. So some of the heavier rain is on the way later on. But this morning in the triangle, expect pockets of light rain as you're headed out the door. By lunchtime, it'll be pockets of heavy rain, especially in our southern counties. And then by the time folks are driving home, that rain will be steady to heavy, Ken. All right, happening now in the W Traffic Center, all new just in. We're following reports of, uh, of Carrick Police working this crash on Jones Franklin Road in South Bar near Dillard Drive. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown around Dillard Drive. Of course, that's near the middle school. Just keep an eye on that for you, and we'll let you know how much that's going to continue to affect your morning commute this morning. As we isolate the Beltline, you can see what we're talking about here. That's south side of the Beltline. You see looking at a, maybe a three- to five-minute delay. Similarly, in the north side of the Beltline, things are beginning to uh, clear up just a little bit, but I'll keep an eye on it. Have an update in the bottom of the hour over on Fox 50. Emergency management crews are on the ready this morning as they prepare for impacts from this storm system. This comes just after a month over over a month after Tropical Storm Debbie. Duke Energy expects some areas to lose power in this storm, especially as winds off of the coast move inland and mix with heavy rain. Next on Fox 50, what we know about the latest expansion to bring more jobs to Johnston County. Tracking the rain from our tropical system that's pushing up from the south. I'll show you when you'll see the heaviest rain on this WRL weather alert day. And covering Wake County, we got the WRL storm tracker out on the roadways this morning. Looking at the closer look at the road conditions, I'll tell you where the trouble spots are and how to get around them. And we are learning more about the second apparent attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. WRL is giving you a look at the suspect's criminal records here in our state. Plus, another company coming to Johnston County. The announcement happening in just a few hours that will reveal the manufacturer providing hundreds of jobs for the area. Johnston County is growing very quickly. We know that more jobs are coming. We'll tell you about all about it. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Chris Lovingood. As you just saw below the desk seconds ago, today is a WRL weather alert day. Elizabeth Gardner has been tracking that very closely right now with the dual Doppler 5000. Mostly this morning, it's been fairly light, but just notice now, starting to see a little bit of yellow showing up just south of the I-95 corridor and definitely closer to the coast. Some yellow uh, colors showing up. That's where the rain is a little heavier, and that will continue to lift northward as we get through the day. We'll probably notice a pretty big difference by lunchtime and the triangle. We've had some waves of some uh, lighter rain just coming through Chapel Hill, some showers in Raleigh and Garner, and then it really picks up as you head into Johnston County and some of our southern counties. It's been raining pretty steadily in Fayetteville for a good chunk of the morning as well as Clinton and Goldsboro. We take a live look at RDU and it's looking pretty quiet here, but a lot of cloud cover. We're just seeing some light patchy rain in the triangle, but we do have a flooding threat. We're going to continue to see the rain from this tropical system all the way through tomorrow morning. We also have a level one risk for severe storms in our eastern counties in just a few minutes. Meteorologist uh, Chris Michaels is going to come up to talk a little bit more about that tornado threat. We'll also have some straight line wind gusts with this as well. Our flood watch is in effect through tomorrow morning for two to five inches of rainfall and that level one risk for severe storms in our eastern counties. Uh, we're looking at this still as a potential tropical storm because it doesn't have a closed circulation. It definitely has strong enough winds at 50 miles per hour, but boy, it's a slow mover too.
to only moving at three miles per hour. So it's still moving into the mountains by late Tuesday night. So we're going to continue to have that potential for some scattered rain. The heaviest will be tonight and into early tomorrow. You can see there at three o'clock in the afternoon, some fairly widespread rain and the heavier rain starts to really lift northward as we get into the late afternoon and evening. Uh, moving up to about a 90% chance of rain by this afternoon and overnight tonight. It'll stay cool today with temperatures only in the low 70s. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit more about the wind that goes with the system. Ken? Well, Elizabeth, at 832, traffic is definitely picked up here in, uh, on many of our major roadways. We have the W.O. Storm Tracker out on the roads this morning. Let's check in with Laura Levine, giving us a closer look at the conditions that you're seeing on Highway 70 this morning, Laura. Ken, good morning. That's right. Right now we are traveling east on US 70 and you can see we're experiencing this light rain, but it's almost like a misty rain at the same time. We're also beginning to see a lot of that water uh, just gather a little bit on the roads, so the vehicles in front of us picking it up um, and putting it in the air. So we are seeing some wetter conditions compared to maybe an hour, an hour and a half ago when we were out here in Garner. If you're heading out this morning, be mindful that you will continue to see uh, the rain pick up throughout the day as well as uh, some of the conditions throughout the viewing area on the roads get a bit slicker, get a bit wetter. So you just want to take your time if you're heading out. We'll continue to monitor the conditions across the viewing area throughout the day and keep you updated on how things are looking. Ken? Oh, some good advice there. Also, uh, if you come across any type of crashes, you might want to move over one lane. It's the law. Give law enforcement officials an opportunity to work those crash scenes safely. A couple of things we want to bring your attention to. This one is a crash on Franklin Road, uh, south on near Dillard Drive. We've worked seeing a little bit of a slowdown in that area because, you know, it's near that middle school, but it's beginning to clear up nicely here. As we isolate the belt, I want to show you exactly what's going on on the south, line, south side of the belt line and the north side of the belt line. See, so Things have cleared up quite a bit in those westbound lanes on the north side of the Beltline. On the south side, we're still seeing maybe a three to five minute delay if you're navigating that way. You're coming in from Garner or Johnston County this morning. Another trouble spot is right here in this Highway 70 uh, southbound near Miami Boulevard. You can see the congestion it's causing in those northbound lanes, but not so much in those southbound lanes where that crash is happening. So just keep that in mind if you're about to head out. Would recommend it. I-885 is an alternate route, but there was, uh, there was some congestion going on there all the way down the TW Alexander Drive and going back to the uh, Highway 147 this morning. You know, Highway 55 might be an alternate route. So let me give you a look at what that looks like on I-885 and TW Alexander Drive. Traffic has definitely picked up in both directions, although they're moving, but in a slow, steady clip this morning. All right, thanks, Ken. Emergency management crews are on the ready this morning as they prepare for possible impacts from the storm system. This comes just over a month after Tropical Storm Debbie brought whipping winds and soaking rains. That storm caused some flooding and power outages. Officials say there could be flooding again from this storm in low-lying areas. We're working with our, our partners to understand, do they anticipate public safety issues? Uh, if they do, then can we lean ahead? Duke Energy expects some areas to lose power in this storm, especially as winds off the coast move inland and they mix with heavy rain. And Jeff Hogan of the WR Live Center, I want to take you to a couple of live cameras that we have from down at our coast right now. And you can see that storm surge is just pushing in up onto the beach right here. This is a live look at Carolina Beach. As you see, the camera's moving around. It's not giving you much of a reference point except on the very left hand side there. You see the lifeguard stand. Uh, tide is coming in, pushing up towards the beach uh, area. Also, some other reference points here. This is uh, Carolina Beach, as you see right here. Uh, so, or actually Surfside Beach uh, as you take a look right here. Now all these beaches in this area uh, are under flash flood warnings um, right now including Wrightsville Beach uh, places like this and you see how far up the beach almost uh, covered in some of that surf getting up there and that's going to be until uh, about 1.30 this afternoon that those conditions persist and you can see uh, at the tops of those waves as they're breaking that wind is just pushing uh, some of that sea mist off of them as well so wind whipping angry ocean out there. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Jeff. And WREL will closely monitor this system, providing live reports from the Triangle to the coast today. We'll keep you updated on the threat of flooding and other potential impacts, offering all the essential information you and your family need to stay informed and safe. 
This morning, the FBI and authorities in Florida are working to learn how a, sus a suspect would-be assassin got close to former President Trump. Folks, we're talking about just a few hundred yards away at Trump's golf club in Florida. The Secret Service says agents saw a would-be shooter lying in wait, and those agents shot at him. The suspect is in custody this morning and is expected to face federal charges. We're also learning more about his ties to North Carolina. Overnight, Trump thanked the Secret Service and other law enforcement for their efforts to keep him safe. In a post to his Truth Social account just before midnight, Trump said, quote, I would like to thank everyone for your concern and well wishes. It was certainly an interesting day. He went on to thank everyone who kept him safe and said he is very proud to be an American. In her own statement released just before 11, Vice President Kamala Harris said in part, as we gather the facts, I will be clear, I condemn political violence. We all must do our part to ensure that this incident does not lead to more violence. She also said she is thankful that Trump is safe. The federal government is taking over the case against the suspect in the assassination attempt. This is him right here, Ryan Ralph. Local authorities were able to take him into custody shortly after the apparent assassination attempt. Law enforcement say they found an AK-47 style rifle, a GoPro and other items that, was le that were left behind. They were also found in the bushes near Trump International Golf Club. We are learning more about the extensive criminal history that Ralph has here in North Carolina. Ralph's LinkedIn account shows that he attended North Carolina A&T. The North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections has dozens of records for him dating back to 2002. And charges that year include possessing a weapon of mass destruction, which is a felony. And records also show in 2003 he was sentenced for driving without a license, carrying a concealed weapon, and hit and run. In 2010, he was convicted of possessing stolen goods. The local Fox station in Greensboro reports that Ralph lived in that area before moving to Hawaii sometime this year. And former President Donald Trump is expected to have a rally in Wilmington on Saturday. We don't know just yet if there will be any additional security measures, but WRL is checking on that. Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate Tim Walls will also be in North Carolina this week. He'll make a stop in Asheville tomorrow night. And Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, is making a campaign stop in Raleigh on Wednesday. That will be at Union Hall in downtown Raleigh. WREL will cover all the candidates' visits now through Election Day. Johnson County is growing quickly, and today we'll learn more about the latest expansion that could bring hundreds of new jobs. WREL's Kelsey Coffey explains what we know ahead of today's announcement. Today, officials will talk about bringing a new food manufacturer to the area. This would make the second company to expand here with the Eastfield Development in Selma in less than six months. This could bring about 200 jobs to the area. A drug manufacturer announced an expansion to Johnson County back in June. People familiar with this new deal tell WREL this could be a $35 million development. The county did not reveal the name of the company, but we could hear an announcement in just a few hours. Local officials are scheduled to discuss economic incentives for the company today. That's a sign that Johnson County is the company's choice. The county's economic development director, Chris Johnson, says this potential deal speaks to the area's growth. We're traditionally in the top five of the fastest growing counties in the state. Uh, at one time, we were the ninth fastest growing county in the U.S. statistically. Uh, and we're not slowing down. State economic leaders will also meet this morning. It's likely that their meeting is related to this new development, but we're still working to confirm that. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Johnson County. The NFL's number one draft pick here is uh, struggled in his primetime debut on Sunday Night Football. Chicago Bears quarterback Caleb Williams threw two second-half interceptions as he tried to lead his team back against the Houston Texans. He was also sacked seven times in the game. The Texans held on to get the win over the Bears 19-13. to And week two of the 2024 NFL season wraps up tonight with Monday Night Football. The Atlanta Falcons are in Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. You can watch that game at 8-15 on ESPN. And today, hearings looking into the question of what happened during the 2023 Titan submersible disaster will begin. Coming up, what Coast Guard authorities want to learn about the sub that imploded on a mission to see the Titanic. And just a heads up, folks, today is a WREL weather alert day as you're looking live at White Lake this morning. Just ahead, meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will explain why the evening commute will likely be worse than the morning commute.
844 and we are following our tropical system that is sending rain from south and north across our viewing area. It's been fairly steady in the south so far this morning. It's been on and off kind of uh, scattered showers from the triangle area southward. We haven't really seen much rain near the Virginia line yet, but starting to see a sprinkle or two um, up toward the uh, I-85 corridor. Let's zoom in and talk a little bit more about what we're seeing. Uh, some showers in Apex, Tuquay, Verena, Anger, Wendell, Clayton, Wilson's Mill. A little uh, sprinkle came through Chapel Hill just a little while ago, but it's definitely been steadier to our south from Fayetteville to Hope Mills, to Coates to Dunn, to Goldsboro, to Clinton. A little bit of rain starting to work into Wilson at this point as well. We're going to see that rain lifting northward as we get through the afternoon, and it'll be more widespread and heavier, so we do have a flood watch that's in effect through tomorrow morning. We could see two to five inches of rain and the potential for some isolated tornadoes in our eastern counties. Also some wind gusts, 20 to 40. Our flood watch again, two to five inches. Some of the heavier totals down south from the triangle area northward is going to be more like the one and a half to two inch totals. Uh, of course, typically with the, tr with the tropical system, we do have the potential for isolated tornadoes and that chance would be greatest in our eastern counties. Meteorologist Chris St. Michaels is here to talk a little bit more about why we see these with tropical systems. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with some of the friction uh, that comes with a system that comes on land. And it's especially that eastern side of a tropical system that has more rising motion, more moisture as well. So in the red there, that's your rain, that's your wind, and that's your potential for some isolated tornadoes. I do want to point out that this is not going to be a repeat of Debbie. What I've done, though, is plotted the surface wind in the white and the wind at the 3,000 foot level in the red. Let's give you a 3D view of that, and you can see how the surface wind is from the northeast, but the wind just above is from the east. So right away, there's just a little bit of spin. So if there's a thunderstorm that can grow tall enough and tap into that spin, you could have some uh, tornado warnings maybe later in the day. This is a look at the hour by hour spin in the atmosphere, and you see that it starts to go up a little bit as we head especially into the evening. So that's really going to be the time frame that we keep an eye on. If a watch is issued, it means that a tornado is possible. If a warning is issued, that is when we are going with continuous coverage right here on WRAL. But really, regardless of a name with this storm, impacts are the same, one of which is some of that heavy rain, Elizabeth, that you're tracking along the coast this morning. Yeah, thanks for that exclamation. I, you know, I know a lot of folks wonder, why do we see these tornadoes with these systems? Of course, that system is spinning off the coast here, moving really onshore just north of Charleston right now. Uh, you can see as we remove that low, you can see the center of circulation. Uh, and with that center of circulation coming on shore, it is highly unlikely that this storm is actually going to get a name. It's probably going to just continue to be a potential tropical cyclone. You can see the heaviest rain with this is going to be uh, from, say, uh, our southern counties all the way toward the coast. And then we'll see some of this heavier rain spreading farther inland. But for sure, the heaviest rain is going to be along the South Carolina line, uh, much more so than what we'll see as it travels northward. So uh, right now it's 85 miles south of Cape Fear, which is right around the Wilmington area. Winds at 50 miles per hour. And this one is crawling along. It's only moving at about three miles per hour. But very slowly it moves inland toward the mountains and will continue to spread rain inland as uh, we get through the next uh, 24, really to 36 hours. Here's lunchtime. Some of that heavier rain moving on through, but you know how tropical systems are. They tend to come in waves with the rain coming through, and so we're just going to see waves of heavy rain on and off, especially for our southern counties. Three to five inches in the south from the triangle area northward. It's going to be more like one to two inches. And of course, we'll also have some gusty winds at about 20 to 25, except closer to uh, the South Carolina line could be more like 40 mile per hour gusts. We continue with a chance for showers and thunderstorms Wednesday Thursday and Friday, even after the tropical system departs. We don't really start to dry out until the weekend. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was warning Yemen's Houthis that they face that they, they will face a heavy price after the group fired a missile into Israel. The missile fell into an open area and no injuries were reported. This is rare for a missile to hit so far into Israeli territory. A spokesman for the Iran-backed Houthis military spokesman confirmed the attack. They warned that Israel should expect more strikes as the first anniversary of the October 7th attack by Hamas approaches. Today, hearings will begin looking into the 2023 Titan submersible disaster. The company OceanGate owned that vessel. You may recall it was headed to the site of the Titanic last June. Well, that submersible imploded about an hour and 45 minutes into a voyage. All five people aboard, including the CEO of OceanGate, were killed. The hearing is expected to look at OceanGate's history and its operations. The Coast Guard is hoping that it can learn more about what led to the implosion. 
Police are looking for this man, Jesse Johnson Jr. He is wanted for first degree murder after a man was killed at a motel in Rocky Mount. Police say the shooting happened at Hal Orr's Inn just after one o'clock yesterday morning. They believe a fight broke out and 39 year old Mac Jenkins was shot and killed. Two others, Harold Phillips and Alicia Petaway, they are charged with felony accessory after the fact in this case. Covering Johnson County, students may be going to different schools starting next year. These are new draft maps for elementary, middle and high school designations within the school district that you're seeing. The new maps are designed to prevent crowding in schools. They account for two newly constructed schools and three schools with new additions that can house more students. You can share your thoughts on the new school boundaries at the school board's meetings that are on September 30th and October 1st. Health experts say combating the spread of disease is a team effort, citing the importance of routine vaccinations. Now a dip in childhood vaccinations is raising concerns as kids are back in school. Ted Linder has the details. As students across the country continue settling into the new school year, declining rates of routine childhood vaccinations are proving unsettling to a growing number of health officials. There were immunization gaps throughout the country throughout our history. But COVID really um, created a huge gap. A recent Gallup poll revealed 40% of Americans said it is extremely important for parents to make sure their kids are vaccinated. That's down from 58% in 2019. The CDC reports 93% of kindergartners received their required shots during the 2022 to 2023 school year. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the rate was 95%. Doctors cite how the pandemic caused more parents to start questioning the standard shots their kids used to get, adding how it's important to combat misinformation while trying to help make it easier for families to vaccinate their children. If parents are working, they don't exactly match the hours of medical practitioners, language, transportation, all are barriers. So we came up with a plan if we could use community partners and figure out if we could do clinics where the children are. In Kentucky, the Louisville school system held vaccine clinics across nearly 160 schools last year. This year was no different. There are about 25,000 students who are either not vaccinated or not fully vaccinated. Making sure kids are up to date on their shots can help ward off the spread of diseases as the new school year presses on. That was Ted Linder reporting. Data shows 9,000 kindergartners in North Carolina were not up to date on required vaccinations last school year. 23andMe reached a settlement to pay tens of millions of dollars to its users because of a data breach. The DNA testing company agreed to pay $30 million for failing to protect the data of nearly 7 million customers. The proposed payout will resolve a class action lawsuit against the company. The suit stemmed from a data breach from last year. That's when customers' personal information was exposed. People whose information was in this breach will receive cash payments. They can enroll in a privacy and genetic monitoring service. AI technology is now being used to monitor police officers' behavior. We don't have an issue that we're trying to fix. We're just trying to help our officers and our staff be better. WRL investigates the new system to review body camera footage now in use for the first time in our state. Researchers say it's already getting positive results. That story is tonight at 6. Time is 8.53. Before we go to break, here's a quick look at your winning lottery numbers.